I'm Stephanie Jones, Director of eBusiness at the SEMA Data Co-op. I've worked hands-on with data standardization since 2003. I've had the opportunity to learn from and work beside some of the folks instrumental in shaping the standards in the early years. I've designed systems and published thousands of data files using the standards and have taught several courses to share my cultivated knowledge. I hope you find useful information in this video that can assist in better understanding the standards and how to use them to benefit your organization. In this ACES intro video, we'll cover the databases that comprise ACES, the ACES structure, how applications are exchanged, and essential components of an application. Although ACES itself is quite complex, it achieves one main goal for the automotive aftermarket. It provides it the way for you to convey what vehicle your product fits, ensuring your customers are selecting the right part number. ACES regulates how we spell, identify, and refer to a vehicle. Computer systems like predictability. This standardization ensures that all of our computer systems can understand each other when data ex is exchanged through a single delivery format and the coded values that come from an industry-wide shared set of tables. And notice in the name itself, the Aftermarket Catalog Exchange Standard, the third word in the acronym is exchange. ACES also provides the rules for standardizing the exchange of the data. So a predictable format is always sent. This lessens cost and time delays in support of various proprietary formats. The ACES industry standard is built around exchanging data through machine readable XML files that allow the efficient transfer of large amounts of data between trading partners. Here is an example of what an ACES file looks like. Here you see that the data is numerically coded and it, it's housed within an application. Applications identify the part number, the vehicle, and any other spare, special characteristics about the vehicle. We'll go into more detail about how to create applications later on. ACES is built upon four databases, each containing a unique set of structures and fields. There's the VCDB, the QDB, the PCDB, and the brand table. The first and the main database of the ACES standard is the VCDB. This is the Vehicle Configuration Database. It is the relational database of all of the vehicle details for cars and trucks. Within this database, you'll see all of the vehicles and the specifications about the vehicle as delivered from the factory. So basically, anything that you can think of that describes a vehicle. Part selection many times requires calling out other facets of a vehicle beyond a basic year make model to get to the proper part number. On this slide, you can see all the various specifications about a vehicle. In ACES, these are referred to as vehicle configurations. So, in the VCDB table, you'll see each of these configurations are broke out into their own table, along with bridge tables that link or adjoin the configurations together. These will come in handy when you need to write a query or construct your application, but we'll get to that in a minute. Configurations cover the body, bed, brakes, springs, drive type, wheelbase, transmission, steering, engine, and the manufacturer body codes. The second database that supports ACES is the QDB. This is the qualifier database that consists of free text expressions typically found in application notes. Basically, you can code additional fitment information about a part number that is relevant to it in the part selection process. Data receivers many times like to see the notes coded when possible as it ensures accuracy and can become a searchable field. The alternative to using the QDB is to use the freeform notes field in ACES. Notes are not a numeric coded field. And here's an example of what some of the qualifiers would look like coming out of the qualifier database. They're all assigned an ID, then they each have a, a qualifier text name. So there's different ways that these would be used in the different applications. 
Some may require an additional parameter, so the second one down, and others uh, are just making a statement they're about fitment or about um, information about the part, the part itself. The third database supporting ACEs in, is the PCDB. This is the product classifications or the part type assignment. This database defines the category that our parts fit into and it's central to the exchange of electronic catalog data and the proper classification and organization of each part type. This is also important when creating your own category tree for an e-commerce site or the like. And the final database that supports ACEs is the brand table. This allows each trading partner to have their own identification in a coded format that's easily consumed by computer systems. It gives us brand and parent company relationships so that they're consistently identified. And as you see on these last uh, couple of databases, the PCDB and the brand table, they overlap with the PIES data as well. So that means that data that comes from the PCDB and the brand table is usable both from in the ACES standard as well as the PI standard. ACES covers passenger cars and SUVs, light trucks, medium and heavy duty trucks, and even other transportation modes such as ATVs, motorcycles, or even snowmobiles. So in ACES, when we refer to a vehicle, it can fit any of these. ACES encompasses year ranges from today all the way back to 1896, and it currently covers three regions, US, Mexico, and Canada. And it's starting to reach out into other international regions. Here on the screen is an example of some of the information that you're going to need when mapping a part. As you see at the first step, uh, at the top of the screen, you've got to select the part type, then you've got to know what parts you're mapping, then you build the fitment from there. So your fitment may be as simple as a year, make, model, submodel, or a region, or you may have to go into further details uh, such as configurations of the engine, configurations of the transmission, and so forth. So all of those important details are what would be needed to complete an ACES application. The governing body of the ACES standard is Auto Care Association under the guidance of a volunteer leader group called the Technology Standards Committee. They provide input and guidance in keeping the standards relevant and meeting the needs of its users. The SEMA Data Co-op is a proud supporter of the industry standards and works closely with its organization on initiatives, changes, and challenges in data management for the betterment of our members. To subscribe to ACES, contact Auto Care Association to have access to these databases and the monthly updates for each database. But if you're not sure that you want to maintain an ACES database in-house, you can still create fully standardized ACES files through the SDC. We can provide all of the tools for you to standardize your data without you ever touching an XML file or a database. We've developed user-friendly load sheets and online systems to help guide you how to map and create applications. Then our system validates, stores, and distributes your data to your resellers. Let our expert team help you with any questions. So let's review what we've covered in this ACES intro course. First, ACES is the industry standard for data exchange in North American markets. Secondly, XML and coded IDs are how the applications are sent to your data receivers. Third, there's multiple databases that support the ACES standard. Fourth, the SDC offers both online and offline tools to help map data applications. And lastly, AutoCare Association is the governing body for the ACES standard. Thanks for watching.